What is up guys, this is a uh, little bit of follow-up video on the hardware of the Arduino controlled power supply. Um, I'm basically using a, uh, a Fisher AMFM radio case that I've gutted out completely. Uh, here is the old circuit board for it. Uh, I don't really use the radio anymore. Um, and I haven't used that radio or this radio in years, so um, I decided to use it as the enclosure. As you can see, it's really freaking thin. Here is a ruler. It's about two and a eighth. Yeah, about two and an eighth inches thick from the ground. Uh, I kept the original power button. Uh, I did not use the original switch, though, as you can see. This switch on here is uh, not a mains rated switch. It's not meant for mains. So I put my own switch. I made a little bracket for it. As you can see, this little bracket. Um, so I have an IEC connector on the back. It's got a little bit of filtering on it. Uh, there's a fuse holder right here. I still need to attach the ground wire. Um, but actually, I don't really need to since there's a, a metal thing here that goes to a casing around the IEC connector onto the case, but I'm still going to use this anyway just because. Um, so this is our main transformer right here. It's a uh, 120 volts to uh, 20 volts. Uh, I had to modify this transformer a bit. Uh, basically, what I had to do, well, it's not important. But uh, yeah, so basically there's uh, two secondaries on the outputs. Uh, 0 to 20 volts and 0 to 20 volts. Um, it used to be a 20, 0, 20, or a 20, 18, 0, 18, 20, but uh, I've split apart the secondary into two separate coils, so now I have a 0, 20, and 0, 20. Well, the 18 volt line is still here, the these yellow wires, but uh, I'm not using them. Uh, and then here's our second power or second transformer which is a 9 volt 1.1 amps this will be in charge of all of the uh, microcontroller and relays and some of the uh, some of the operational amplifiers uh, so a little bit on how this actually works so the raw AC comes out from here at a step down voltage of course goes into two huge bridge rectifiers uh, 6 amps Per, per rectifier. These are um, K3 or KBU6D, which these are 6 amp rectifiers. No heat sinks on them. Uh, I won't be dissipating 6 amps at full voltage, obviously, since I have some buck converters. This one is not a buck converter, but I'm just using it for sizing right now. Um, so basically, the AC goes in through here. Uh, then it uh, it has a few capacitors, 103 capacitors on the diode bridge, a 104 capacitor, so a 0 0.03 microfarads and 0 0.1 microfarads, and then these big ass reservoir caps, which are uh, 8,200 microfarads each at uh, 71 volts. Obviously, 71 volts way overkill, but uh, these were just something I had sitting in a bin for years, so. I decided on using it. Same with this PCB, I just kind of ghetto milled it. You can actually see the light going through it, and I have tested it. It is electrically isolated. Um, the big huge planes that are unpopulated with nothing on them will be on these uh, headers, or these uh, standoffs. So I need to put um, either a bridge or some kind of shielding thing. Uh, I want to do that because it'll keep out some noise from the switch mode power supply and uh, kind of ground it to earth or shield it to earth if you please. Um, I'll be breaking out the PWMs on these uh, and I'm going to remove the current limiting because I don't need it to current limit since uh, the other part of my circuit will be doing that. I just need it to step down the voltage from uh, 20 to anywhere between 1.25 which is the reference to whatever the maximum that the uh, capacitors can boost the AC up to which is going to be around 27 volts after uh, rectification. So uh, that's going to go... So once it's uh, it's pre-regulated, that's why I'm using the switch mode, um, it'll go into this linear stage right here, which is uh, a single PNP transistor per channel, of course. Um, 
Both of these will be isolated apart, uh, other than from wherever I set the relays to go into either bipolar mode or um, shared ground. But yeah, uh, three tiny fans go into this big chunky aluminum heatsink. These will do linear regulation. Uh, so basically the uh, the voltage reference will be variable depending on the output of these and it will be, you know, however you regulate voltage. Uh, I'll show the modified schematic in maybe the next couple of videos. Still kind of working it out, but uh, yeah, that's the theory, or that's the idea anyways. These transistors might not be the final ones I use, I just had these laying around, but they're pretty high current transistors. Uh, so yeah, I have the front panel sort of figured out. Uh, I cut out everything that was here, so there was a bunch of shit here. I just cut it out. Um, when I cut it out, I kind of cut away some of the uh, support mechanisms for this metal bar right here, or support pieces. So uh, there's only one screw instead of three screws throughout here, and there's only two instead of three. Um, so I'll be having three LCDs. Uh, this is just the one LCD I had on hand right now. Uh, it will obviously not be screwed in like this. I have an acrylic piece that I'm going to put over it and drill some holes for these screws to mount on and also for these binding posts and the uh, the encoders and a few buttons and potentiometers. That works a treat though. Um, so yeah, there'll be three LCDs and just the encoders. Um, maybe one button... No, I don't, I don't think I need to use a button because I can use the encoder button and it will be like a sort of a menu kind of thing. But yeah, an encoder and a precision potentiometer. Well, not really precision, but I'll call it the trim pot, which will do uh, linear trimming, just in case the uh, the PWM on the uh, the Arduino is not quite there. Since I'm not using a precision DAX or anything, or I'm not using high resolution DAX and ADCs, uh, I kind of need a trimmer stage for this. Like most of the time I shouldn't need to touch it, but if I do need to trim it to like exactly 5 volts or something, then I can do that. Uh, yeah, I'll be having a few relays here for a cutoff supply in case there's overcurrent or like some kind of crazy ass mistake. Um, here's another relay for the dummy load section. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Here's our dummy load. Uh, it's basically the same as the one I've made before using the four resistors in a series parallel configuration. Um, but basically I made it smaller here with a single more powerful MOSFET instead of two MOSFETs. Um, yeah, uh, not everything is done yet, but this is a basic layout. And as far as thermals go, the lid on this thing does not have holes in it like at all so either I'll have to cut holes or I have to cut more of these holes for the fan this hole was not originally here and these holes were also not originally there I had to cut those in myself um, so yeah uh, right now it's three this way and then I'll keep a little shroud thing here and a shroud here and it will go that and then out through the back um, as for letting air in I'll probably end up cutting more holes for uh, for more of these tiny fans. I have a couple more of them, so I might as well use them. I don't really use them for anything else. Um, they're just, you know, gathering dust. But uh, hopefully this should stay relatively cool because of the pre-regulation. Uh, so maybe only at most 5 watts being dissipated through the linear section. So I'm trying to maybe aim for around one or two volts of a drop through the linear system uh, yeah and that should keep efficiency and thermal pretty good but you know shitload of fans uh, I'll also be putting a couple more things other than these two PNP transistors obviously this is kind of an overkill heatsink but uh, I won't do that until I really know how much power these things dissipate uh, so yeah, if you like this video and want to keep updated, uh, you know, subscribe me and other crap like that, because I don't really care. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.